impacts on the moon is outside the interests of most mainstream archaeologists, as archaeology tends to adhere to a pre-Copernican geocentric point of view. It is generally accepted that the search for alien artifacts on the moon is not necessary because there are none. Given the success in using terrestrial remote sensing to find archaeological sites on Earth, can similar techniques be used to find possible artificial construction on the moon and other planets? For example, the ancient Khorezian fortress Khoi Kala in Uzbekistan, constructed between the 4th century BC to the 1st century AD, appeared as an impact crater before excavation in 1956. On the moon, Khoi Kala would not be perceived among all the other impact craters. In 1962, Carl Sagan spoke on the possibility of discovering alien artifacts on the moon, stating that forthcoming photographic reconnaissance of the moon from space vehicles, particularly the far side, might bear these possibilities in mind. Rectangular patterns on airspace photos are recognized as signs of human culture in the remote sensing of the Earth and air archaeology. It seems reasonable, then, to search for rectangular patterns on the Moon or on Mars. I walked into the photo lab in the restricted area, and this was between missions. Uh, one of the gentlemen I had been friends with, and I still talk to occasionally, uh, he pointed to one area of this mosaic. It was one panel of a mosaic and with a smile on his face. He said, look over there. And I looked, and in one of the photo panels, uh, I saw a round white dot. And at the time, it was very crisp, very sharp lines on it. And I said to him, uh, what, what is that? Is that a dot on the emulsion? And then he's grinning and he says, uh, dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And there was a round shadow at the right angle, at the correct angle, the sun shining on the trees. I saw pine trees. I didn't see a coastline. I don't know where this was. And uh, I said, is this a UFO? And he's smiling at me and he says, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that. What I knew he meant was it was, but he couldn't tell me. So I said, what are you going to do with this information? And he said, well, we always have to airbrush them out before we sell them to the public. In 1965, um, mm -hmm. in mid-1965, I was loaned to the Lunar Orbiter Project at NASA on Langley Field. They had problems with a piece of... Um, electronic equipment that was bottlenecking their production of photographs. Um, I was taken into the laboratory where the equipment was malfunctioning. The uh, airman second class was in the dark room at that time. I was also an airman second class. About 30 minutes into the process, he said to me in a very distressed way, um, by the way, we've discovered a base on the backside of the moon. And then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me, and clearly in these photographs were structures, spherical buildings and towers.
just airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. It showed this base, which had geometric shapes. There were towers. There were spherical buildings. There were very tall towers and things that looked somewhat like radar dishes, but they were large structures. If I compare it to what I'm seeing now, because I do have photographs that have artifacts in them that are similar to what I saw, they're massive. Some of the structures are, you know, half a mile in size. So they're huge structures. Some of the buildings seem to have very reflective surfaces on them. A couple of structures that I saw reminded me of cooling towers at power generating plants. They had that sort of a shape. Some of them were just very, very straight and tall with a flat top. The particular shot that I saw, there were several clustered together over a landscape, a fairly large landscape. I worked there for three more days and I remember going home and naively thinking, I can't wait to hear about this on the evening news. And here it is, more than 30 years later, and I hope we hear about it tonight. And I will testify under oath before Congress that what I'm saying is the truth. In 1959, the U.S. Army completed a plan for a manned military outpost on the moon. The Horizon Lunar Outpost was said to be necessary to protect United States interests on the moon, to conduct moon-based surveillance of the Earth and space, to act as a communications relay, and to serve as a base for exploration of the moon. The permanent outpost would cost $6 billion and become operational in December 1966 with 12 soldiers. The base would be defended against Russian overland attack by man-fired weapons. The Apollo program began only two years after the Horizon report, but a moon base would not have been established earlier than the 1970s. During the discussion of UFOs, the question ultimately is going to come up, can any government keep secrets, let alone the U.S. government? And the answer to that is unequivocally yes. People in high-level government have very, very little, if any, information, valid information about this. Most have no more knowledge than the man in the street. There's always been what they call the need to know. They keep pretty much each organization an island unto itself. I looked at him, and I was pretty startled because I'd worked out.